I'm Sabia. Hello, I'm Les. When and where were you born? Um, Lyle Tower Street, St Mary's, on the 29th of May 1921. How did you feel when the war started in, in September 1939? Shocked, really. It was, uh, we wouldn't know, nobody knew what was going to happen. There was a, there was a, a trial blackout. Uh, it was all awkward walking down the streets with the, with the no lights. I joined the LDV, local defence volunteers. They, they gave me a pickaxe handle and stopped me in the middle of a field just <laughs> all night long. Why did they do that? Well, we had, I was going to be in a, put in a field with a, with a pickaxe handle in case parachutes dropped. Uh, that's all we could do it at, at the proper time. Nobody was allowed rifles. They, they hadn't had already handled one. How long did you stay in the LDV? Not very long, until about 1914 I joined the army. Because there's more to do in the army. What regiment did you join? I joined up in the Suffolk Regiment. And uh, I was posted to uh, Martin Shemera Drum, where Douglas Bader was. And the Eagle Squadron was there too. And then I, I was in the Suffolk, uh, 8th Battalion of the Suffolk Regiment. And then I went abroad and joined the Buffs. And then uh, the Buffs in North Africa, in Italy, uh, it was, uh, we had there were so many men. There was only 100 of us left. It was too small to be considered a fighting battalion. So we, we split up and went to the RAs, RA, um, I'm sure you were his man. Then I got wounded and transferred to the RASC when I came out of hospital. Who was Douglas Bader? Douglas Bader was a, 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 a pilot of the first bit fires, but he, he got no legs, or I got four legs. I had many ones actually. And uh, he was a fighter pilot. He got to a prisoner at the finish. Did you see him? Oh yes, I saw him. I, I passed him once and I had to salute him because he was a squadron leader. We have to salute all, all officers. One of your medals is a North Africa star. Why, what happened in North Africa? Uh, the Africa star is for, for anybody that was in Africa uh, at the time of the, of the campaign was on. But well, I was in the uh, front line with the, uh, Alan, at Alamey. Well, it wasn't out of mind really, it was probably was near the Pantara Depression, which was a salt water bug. And it was from there we they started to advance. The the buffs was mobile and we was able to chase the Germans the, the Africa went by. Uh, and we was chasing them and they was they was running in front of us. But they was a I mean they was they were retreating about fifty or fifty or hundred mile. So we was mobile. So we had to leave it up at the night time. The buffs, the buffs, was, was a was a was a extra I got extra uh, uh, platoons and uh, extra companies, and uh, I was also attached to a police squadron of tanks. The C Company's tanks was from the. Uh, Staffordshire Yeomanry, and uh, they were all moved at, at the, in front of the ordinary infantry troops. So we, when we stopped at night and legged up, we had to do it in a circle like, a, like the old Wild West, with all the guns painting outwards. We dug such trenches in front of them, all the way around us. And uh, we, Nobody moved at night time because it was too dark for the start. But when the moon came out and the stars came out, it was quite light. Why was it important to defeat the Germans in North Africa? Well, it was for Mussolini. He wanted the Suez Canal, and that was behind us. We were actually defending the Suez Canal, but we had to 
Vansa Nakamaita, the uh, the North African, anyway. Because they were early come back again. What happened next? The Germans started to retreat and we started to follow them. And we followed them all the way to, all the way to Tunis, which was 2,000 miles away. We, we guarded the prisoners of war, the, mostly Italians. Uh, there was, they were separ we kept them separated. We guarded the Italians and somebody else guarded the Germans. And we went, then we went to, back to, 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 to uh, Tripoli. Uh, and we, we got camped outside the Alms. And we went into Tripoli and lined the coast road when the, when the, when the uh, king paid a visit. Then we went back to Tunis again and over to Algiers. And it was from Algiers we went over to Italy. What happened when you went to Italy? We landed first in, in Naples. And, and then we went from there by board boat and landed on a beach which later became known as the Be at Van Amdel Beachhead. And we was on there for five months. And then we broke through there, but round about May, and, uh, well, the end of May, and uh, March time Rome. And uh, we know when the Americans come, because the prices went up. We could have bought a bottle of wine for five shillings when we first got there, and a week later they went up to a pound. <laughs> The big gun, it, it was on a railway, it was on a flat car on a railway and it used to go under a tunnel to be to protection. And when it came out, it fired one shell. It couldn't keep on firing, it had to wait until it's cooled down. We fired one shell about 500 weight. And it, it, was, it, it went over our heads and was aiming for the ships, trying to get the ships down. And, but uh, I don't know whether it's ever succeeded. I stayed in Italy uh, till 1946. I gather you were wounded in Italy. Can you tell me about that? Well, I was, uh, we was advancing behind a creeping barrage and I, I got down a, a shallow, a shallow, a shallow, shallow and uh, because we were being stunned with the uh, artillery baggage. And uh, we, I, I was lying on my left hand side, and with my hand over my tummy gun. And, and then the shrapnel come down and, and propel it, bent through my hand. And uh, I, I was uh, down, but waiting back, but went into hospital. Every every place in the army it was it given a code name, and uh, the place before the river that we really got across was done with D done Don and and D Company is also represented to us Don, and there was a radio operator who was talking to D Company, and he couldn't hear what they were saying, so he said, Don repeat. We should have said Don say again because Don repeat is in the fire order for the artillery, which they did repeat on Don and I was there. And the shell came down and, and a shrapnel gave it through my hand. And I eventually had to have my finger, well my finger was a compound fracture and injury to the ring finger. And I've lost the yeah, ring finger and also on my hand. I got no cup. I kept on dropping money out of that. Mm. <laughs> so the shell that wounded you was from your own side? Well, that happens quite a few times. You know, in North Africa, the American Air Force strafed us twice. And, uh, and of course, in Italy, the mistakes are made. They're always made, being made. We lost 50% of the battalion uh, when we was through uh, a barrage mostly through our own artillery. What happened to you after you were wounded? I put me, I, I got me uh, about a DJ out of my back, back pocket and put it in my hand and I went back to uh, the, the company command, the company office, or a visitor's house. And uh, from there I would walk back to the uh, first, uh, regimental first aid post. And we, we was uh, given a cup of tea, a, a anti-gangrene pill, 
Dan wijs je voor ambulances te komen, dan zeggen ze why. Then we went to, uh, uh, the ambulance took us to a, a, a tented uh, office, like, like MASH, and uh, I was operated on there. And I, they tried to save me thing, a little finger, but after three, after the three operations, uh, I had it amputated. Well, I, they, I didn't have it, they didn't. They couldn't do it, they couldn't save me a little finger. And, I, and then I went and had it streamlined. Because I took it off like that first, and I kept on knocking it up. So they stayed on it, done it like that for them. What happened next? We, oh, we went back to a, a casualty clearing station where I was operated on, and they strapped my finger down like that. And then I went to another one and they put it in plaster of Paris like that. I went to the third one and they took it off. And it's still in Italy as far as I know. <laughs> and then uh, we, I was in hospital for four months. Came out of the hospital to a convalescent camp for four weeks. Then I was downgraded from A1 to B1 and transferred to the RASC where they taught me how to drive. And I was a driver until the end of the what? End of the war. What did you do in the RASC? The RASC is a, is a, a, a driving mostly. Uh, well, we was. Uh, we had a, went to a college where the, what the RASC had taken over, and they taught us to drive. And we were driving five-ton trucks. And I had a Canadian, a Canadian, a Canadian Dodge, and uh, we went out trying to learn to drive first. We had mornings we were driving, the afternoons maintenance, and the second week we had a, well, uh, after mornings at maintenance and driving in the afternoons, and there were six drivers to a, to a wagon. So I had to take it in turns. We went out on a, on the third week, we went out on the convoy, and now there was 12 men to a wagon. And at the end of the three weeks, we passed out as drivers. I mean, I'd always posted to an ambulance company, but of course the war had been over for nearly a, 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 quite a, for a few months. So we need to have ambulances to arrive. I drove a, a water tanker. And, and, uh, and uh, then I was, uh, they decided to streamline, uh, operate on my hand again. And while I was in hospital, an officer come round and said, you, you, you and you, and I'll come back to England. Mm. And that, uh, there was a, a, a tra train coming back to England, bringing badly wounded men. And they just come to the hospital to fill it up, but there was a lot of spice in it. And I happen to be one of them. I've been abroad for four years. Two years of that was in action. What happened when you came back to England? We were put in hospital in Wakefield and uh, stayed there for about two, for two weeks. And then they sent us on disembarkation leave. And then we have to, after the leave ended, we had to report to a hospital in, uh, in Lichfield. And then uh, from there I was posted to a RSC transport firm in, uh, uh, in uh, up north by Lancaster. And I stopped there until the end of the end of my service. I didn't, I didn't even have a one wagon most of the time because I was too, too near and dim up to be given the, the, the wagon. And I, one day I was de de demobbed. No, I had about, I had a, I demobbed it at the end of Ju July. And I, my relief, uh, it ended in November 1946. And that was when my services with the colours was terminated. I got married at the end of uh, 46. 
or make me more of after, after I come out of the army. There's a lot of comedians in the army. Uh, they, he was amazing. There was one story about uh, a chap that was very tall and with big feet. And he used to stand up when he was shouting, he was only to say, one that one landed over there, or that one landed over there. And, and one day, a sniper got him straight through the head. But because of his big feet, it took him two days to fall over. <laughs> Another story was about it, the, the bad truck we was in, where I was on, and had uh, two, two ends. We called them Gert and Daisy. Um, we used to let them out. Uh, they were kept them in a cage under the top that swelled into the side of the chassis. And we used to let them out for a run, run down. And they used to come to us when we called them. And one day, when I was a, I got a back, there was a wind, gale force wind blowing. And the chickens, naturally, had run about for a bit. And then they turned the backs on the wind like most animals do. But one of them laid egg. But because of the wind, they laid, he laid the same egg three times. <laughs> <laughs> there was a saying in the army, uh, in, the, in this, it was, but it was before I went to Baroa, we were in a, ca uh, uh, was in a camp outside uh, uh, Epi, and, uh, and uh, the, the CEO was very keen on keeping the t t t uh, camp tidy. And somebody says, Oh, there's a notice on the notice board. If you see anything on the floor, pick it up. If you can't pick it up, paint it. If you move, salute it. But the, I, there was a true story about the painting of Crash Green. See, when they first moved on to the camp, it was, uh, it was under canvas. So they, they, the, the barracks was, uh, Ots was delivered, and we, we assembled them. And as we sent them, so they dismantled the tents and put them into stock. But it, there was a, the CEO come round and looked at the, uh, the IW of the uh, camp, and he seen there was a belt tent standing. So, and a, and a general was going to come and visit the camp. So, he had it took, but he made it, he took down. He left a brown patch of grass. What? So he could have painted it green. So, I mean, it was common sense, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the story about painting the grass green come yeah. in. There was a reason for it. When a soldier got killed, they covered him over with a bit of gas cape. And they covered his head over. And his, his feet stuck out the bottom. And I think it was a horrible sight, that set sticking his feet out the bottom. Mm. There was one chap, he was a cor Corporal Smith, and he got big feet. You see these big feet sticking up. I never forgot that. Mm. I'll tell you another thing. I never saw a dead bird. I mean, we heard, them, we heard them whistling and singing in the, uh, in the woods. And they stopped singing when the, when the shelling started. But as soon as the shelling stopped, they started singing again. I've never seen a dead bird. I've seen dead cows and dead horses, but not a dead bird. It's funny that. Well, the first place we saw was, was Naples. And uh, where we saw, it was... There was no power. The, uh, our uh, engineers was working on the power station. When Jerry re re retreated, he, 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 he knocked out all one or two things. One of them was a power station. And then he, knocked, he uh, we had to import one of our engine, railway engines because he damaged all of them. Uh, they flooded the plane so that the mosquitoes would uh, all multiply. Things like that, uh, but um, when we when we were, we were landed in in Naples, it was uh, we didn't have nothing to do with the civilians. Most of the places was out of bounds to us anyway, mm. and uh, we were landed in the morning, and then on the night we was on our way to Anzil, mm. so we didn't stop long. We went to the, went to the uh, cinema in the afternoon, but uh, as, I, as I say, the power kept on... We saw a bit of a picture and then the power 
the pair went and then we saw a bit more and they finished with back top and come out. Or oh, they stopped trying to show the film. And then we went on this on a American landing craft and went landed on Anzio. The, 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 the ship was a it got two runway uh, two ramps on one either side of the prow and it, when they got up to up to Anzio, it turned into the uh, shore and just buried the front of it in the sand and we just run down and walked walked through the water, sea water. We took our shoes, so shoes and socks on, there was nobody there. Then there was a people who were always expecting to be held up, but there was nobody, no journeys about at all. As a matter of fact, we walked, we advanced 10 miles, we dug in and we were waiting a week before we Jenny decided we was there, I think. And then, then, then I started shutting us. But there were, uh, the worst ones was the moaning minis. There were six barrel mortars. And they fired them in batteries of three. So when, they, when we heard a whining solo sound, we had to get our heads down. Because we, we, we followed then, there was 12 bombs who used to come over and saturate us. And there was always a call for the stretcher bearers afterwards. Poor side got it. Always lucky, you know, dead lucky. I didn't get, I didn't get worked in until 1944. I mean, I was in action since 1942. I went mean, uh, uh, from North Africa and Italy. Oh, why is it? Les, thank you for talking to me this morning. I've really enjoyed it. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure.